The CA Summer School Series continues on today, presented by Sona Bank. We bring in the head coach of the Delaware Blue Hens, Martin Inglesby. Coach, first of all, thank you for joining us. And let's begin with the coronavirus pandemic. How are you doing, uh, your family and everyone kind of in your inner circle? How have you been during this pandemic? Uh, we're doing well. I think we're in a good little routine right now. Obviously, I like we all got our lives turned up in March, um, it was a little bit of a challenge getting through uh, homeschooling with our gang. We have four little ones, 10-year-old twins, a five and a three-year-old. Uh, my wife did a fabulous job kind of overseeing their schooling in the spring. Um, and then, uh, you know, once school ended, getting into some activities this summer, which uh, opened up in Delaware kind of uh, mid-June of July. So get them out of the house, running around. It's kind of been a blessing for me to be able to spend more quality time with these guys. Um, and just run around outside, playing hoops, playing hide and seek. You know, our summer is usually busy flying all over the country, driving up and down I-95 on the recruiting trail. So a little bit of a reset for all of us. I think this virus has uh, put us back on our heels, but really it gives us a great appreciation to spend time and, and enjoy that quality time we have with, a, with my gang. Speaking of spending more quality time with with your family uh in light of the COVID-19 pandemic what are some of the other things you've been able to do that maybe you didn't get to do in past off seasons because you're up and down I-95 and traveling were able to get into any cool Netflix shows I know that's something that's been trendy or read a new book or anything like that yeah we spent a lot of time watching Netflix and, and HBO um you know got into Ozarks I thought that was a really uh powerful <laughs> show an episode of my wife and I we felt like we'd binge watch that for a couple weeks straight really excited to see uh, season four whenever that comes out um, got into succession so you know um, with sports not available for us to watch try to find other ways to keep us busy but you know with four little ones around the house um, they definitely keep us busy running around and getting outside we taught our five-year-old how to ride a bike and the little guys are out there on their scooters and we spend quite a bit of time down the Jersey Shore just to be able to get out of the house and change the scenery. Um, play golf a little bit. I like to get out there and hit the ball around a little bit. I wish I could do it even more. But um, just trying to be out and active. And now the weather is nice to stay on top of my workouts. And, you know, been on the grill a little more than I usually am in, in June and July. Um, so just trying to get a good balance there. And, again, we haven't been – out too much with other people but in the last couple of weeks you know spend some quality time with my family um it's been a blessing about being closer to home to be able to do some stuff with them what have been some of the challenges being a coach that you've had to face during this off season with the COVID-19 well I think you know you spend so much time with your guys and your players and you know we had a finality to our season in March losing in the semifinals to Hofstra and then everything kind of hit hit and things got turned upside down and at first it was two weeks we'd be out of the office and then it's extended longer than that and who would have thought we'd be into mid mid-August and, and kind of still be in the same position so um, you know, just trying to be able to effectively communicate with our guys, stay on top of their stuff, make sure they're doing what they need to do from an academic standpoint, how they finish the spring semester. It was a blessing for us to be able to get with our guys this summer. Uh, they were in the weight room three days a week in mid-June through the early part of August, and then when the NCAA allowed us to get on the court with our guys. I think for all of our mental health and psyche, just to be out there with them, and to see how excited they were to be back out on the court. So we did three days a week, some skill sessions with them. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I think we're creatures of habit. So you kind of turn the page into the next chapter of, of the season or the year for us. And season finished, and then we get into recruiting mode. And then, you know, that's the dead period through September 30th. So trying to find different ways to stay engaged with your players and trying to improve individually and, and communicate with our staff collectively. So um, that has been a kind of the new normal for us. And, and I think just to, you know, continue to communicate clarity with our guys and keep them upbeat and positive as best we can and kind of keep the blinders on to what's going on in the outside world and stay focused and how we can improve uh, individually. Coach, like you said, you've had the opportunity to have your players on campus. How have those workouts been going? And who are some of the players that fans should keep their eye on this season that may that we might have not seen before? Well, again, like I said before, obviously it was um, you know unbelievable, positive excitement for our guys to just be able to get back in the gym. Everybody kind of dispersed in mid-March and went went home, and you really didn't have a chance or or know when you get 
be able to get back out on the court with those guys. So July 20th was the first day we were able to get out with our guys, and, and we did three days a week, skill sessions in small groups. Um, you know, we had Kevin Anderson and Ryan Allen back, who, you know, the most experienced backcourt uh, coming back in the CAA this year. We have Dylan Painter, obviously, a guy that played the second part of last year for us, uh, who's an older, experienced guy. I think he's going to have another monster season for us. And then for the younger guys, just to be able to get out there and spend time with them to create good habits, talk a little bit about our system and some concepts and structure. But we really kept it pretty simple just to be able to have guys have a ball in their hands, a lot of fundamental work. There'll be a time and a place for us to get back to some team activities and more guys on the floor. But, um, you know, excited about the incoming freshmen that we have. Andrew Carr and uh, Marco Arletti, those guys were with us the second part of the summer sessions to be able to spend some time with them and just get a feel for who they are as players on the basketball court in our system. And, um, you know, just got some other pieces that we're excited about. Obviously, we lost two important pieces in Justin Mutz and Nate Darling when those guys made those decisions, you know, um, to leave our program. So just trying to think uh, about our group and find ways that we can improve. Maybe we got to play a different way or adapt to certain things uh, with our personnel, but um, excited to be able to get back out on the court with our guys hopefully in the next couple of weeks. The trajectory of the Blue Hens has been steadily climbing over the last four years. What's the message to the team this season as you look for that breakthrough NCAA tournament appearance? Well, I mean, I think we just got to get back to really good habits, uh, practice habits and in the weight room. Um, you know, I think heading into the off season, our group was a little different than what we have right now. And, you know, I think we just got to continue to stay hungry and stay true to you know, our core values as a program and how hard we got to work. And then, um, you know, trying to keep our guys upbeat and optimistic, you know, nobody knows what the season is going to look like. Nobody knows when we're going to start. We're all hopeful that November 10th is the start date for our competition. But, you know, obviously we got to work with our health advisory committee, the leadership on campus to see how quickly we can get back out on the court into workouts. Um, but I want our guys excited. I want them upbeat. You know, we know we got a little bit of a target on our back with what we have coming back and how we finished that last, last season. Uh, we know it's going to be extremely difficult. We've got a really good conference. We've got great basketball teams, great coaches. Got a good group of uh, players coming back in our league. So we're going to take it one day at a time and see if we can win that day to keep improving as a basketball team. And you mentioned these players earlier, Kevin Anderson, Ryan Allen, and, and Dylan Painter. How much, how much peace of mind do you have with them coming back, especially for, with an unorthodox offseason like we're having? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of um, the leadership is going to fall on their shoulders. I think those guys want that responsibility. You know, like I talked about with Kevin and Ryan, those guys have been extremely committed to our program. They've been loyal. They've been with us from day one, really the first recruiting class that we had when we got here at Delaware. So, um, you know, a lot's going to fall on those shoulders. I have to help lead them. But those guys want that responsibility, and they're older. As you've seen teams that win in college basketball, they're a senior-laden team, experienced guys. You know, Dylan Painter was um, had a great second semester for us in getting acclimated to our system and style of play. He's got a great presence about him on the court. And, you know, those guys are really going to lead by example. And I think those guys, uh, the younger guys, have done a great job following their lead with how hard you got to work and how committed you have to be to your daily routine and the habits. Um, so I'm excited to have those kind of three-headed monster leading this group as we get back to uh, workouts, hopefully in uh, September. Hey, Coach, let's talk about the league a little bit as, you, as we head into another season. Uh, how much has the landscape changed uh, from this past year to going into this year in the CAA? You know, I thought you, you lose a lot of good players, um, a, lot of, a lot of really talented offensive players in the league, um, you know, Hofstra and Charleston and us and, you know, a lot of guys, whether through graduation or transfers or guys going pro, I think the league comes back a little bit and, you know, there's so much parity. I think the one thing I've seen in my four years in the league, you know, anybody can beat anybody on a given night. You got some new coaches in the league, guys are going to bring different styles of play and and new energy to the program. So, um, you know, I've always preached that we got to take care of our home floor and we got to find ways to steal a couple on the road. And, you know, whether there's fans in the stands, whether there's not, you know, we got to be really good in our building. And, um, you know, and we got to find ways to, you know, depending on what 
Um, we hear from a scheduling standpoint to be able to maximize competitions and see if we can play maybe more than the scheduled 18 league games. If it goes to conference only, we're all hoping that we can play as many games as possible. But um, you got to think creatively and think outside the box to be able to be agile and pivot, depend on what we hear from uh, the leadership of men's basketball at the NCAA. So, uh, but again, you know, we got a great basketball conference. Uh, again, great coaches experienced coaches, programs, teams. So it's going to be another exciting year in the CBA, no doubt about it. Coach, you talked about players in this league pursuing a pro career. One of them was on your team last year, and Nate Darling, a first-team All-CA member, declared for the NBA draft. Uh, what was your message to Nate as he pursued his professional career, is now trying to pursue a professional career? And also, what does it say about this league now? You, we see Jarrell Brantley the other night for the Jazz have a big uh, moment for him from College Charleston. And then obviously we have other players along with Nate that are possible draftees coming up in the NBA draft. Yeah, I mean, Nate was a guy that's been in our program for two years. He transferred from UAB, sat out two years ago, had a phenomenal year for us last year, scoring the basketball and shooting it. And, you know, I really encouraged him to go through this process. Um, it's not wasn't a normal process under, under, you know, certain years where you'd have the, uh, you know, the interviews, the workouts, the combine, whatever it may be. And you know, I think in the end of the day, you thought it was time for him to turn pro. And, you know, we kind of laid out the facts, the pros and cons for him. And that was the decision that he and his parents made. So, um, you know, we wish him the best of luck. And I think it's a testament to our league, you know, the amount of talent that we've had over the last couple of years, guys getting drafted, the success guys have had in the NBA. Uh, obviously, Grant Riller's in a position to be a drafted player this year. Um, you know, the success of John Morant and watching them down in Orlando in the bubble, a lot of those mid-major guards that stayed committed to the school that they chose and had unbelievable success to put them in a position to uh, realize their dream of playing in the NBA. And that's something that, you know, we got to continue to sell in our league. You know, we got a great brand of basketball, great coaches, um, you know, we got to continue to get out there and market our conference as one of the best conferences in the country. And I know we're trying to do that internally within our, uh, you know, in the league, in the individual schools. But, um, you know, again, it's a great quality of talent that we've seen over the last couple of years in our league. And we hope to continue to add more. Wrapping up today with the head coach of Delaware Blue Hens, Martin Ingles being coach. Uh, another headline this offseason, uh, obviously, with the social injustice movement. What have the conversations around your team concerning the social injustice movement and Black Lives Matter been like? Well, they've been great. Um, I think they've uh, we've done a couple of Zoom calls this summer. I think they've been really powerful for guys to hear um, some of the things, you know, the guys have experienced individually. Uh, we actually had the chief of police, uh, the captain of police at the University of Delaware on campus to kind of lead one of the Zoom meetings to talk about, you know, police brutality and, and all the good things that police um, forces do around the country and kind of do's and don'ts when you're in a situation that, um, you know, just to be able to make smart decisions. So um, I wish we could do those discussions in person. That conversation has to, you know, continue as we head into the fall semester. We got to be able to continue to advocate for change. And, um, you know, I really challenge our guys to think about what we need to do when we get back to campus to continue um, this message that, um, you know, the racial injustice, the social injustice, the things that we all face. And, you know, for all of us to kind of step back and listen and learn and educate ourselves of, of what's going on, I know that's been something that, you know, I've tried to do. And you give your guys the opportunity, the platform to share their stories and express their opinions. Uh, it really, I think, brought our team closer together. Well, Coach, thank you so much for sharing that insight with your team and along with everything that's been going on this offseason for your program. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Thank you for the time joining us. And hopefully we see the Delaware Blue Hands out on the court soon. Thanks, Bobby. Always a pleasure. Go Blue Hands.